What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Milwaukee Treasures right here on Saved and the City TV. I'm so excited to be standing here with the amazing and beautiful, I want to say Shanna, but it's Shauna. It's Shauna. Uh, <laughs> Shauna Louise, who's out here doing the work. And uh, what, I, what I love about my Milwaukee Treasures is that generally they're out here doing the work. They don't care about these cameras. So I like to snatch them up and put them uh, for, in, in the forefront just for a moment. So you see that the negative news that we always see or hear about uh, in Milwaukee, there is a balance. There are some people out here actually doing it because they love it. And so I love the work that you're doing with the youth. For those people who don't know uh, you, Shauna, why don't you just share a little bit about what you do, about your organization, and let's kind of flow from there. Yes. So I've been mentoring at-risk teen youth for like the last 10 years. Um, but for the last five years, I actually started a nonprofit organization called Social Butterfly. Mm -hmm. And it works with girls between the ages of 12 to 18. And pretty much our mission is just to encourage and empower our young girls to evolve into their best selves. I love it. I absolutely love it. Actually, for the I saw you for the first time kind of in action, or at least speaking to a room full of women. And I don't remember the exact name of the event. It's slipping my mind. Um, it was recently, um, um, there was another Miss Gillette that had spoke. There were some dancers. Uh, oh. It was at the Grace Center. Yes. Um, uh, it was, with uh, Tamika Johnson. Exactly. Yes. So that's where I saw you. And there was, you had so much passion about what you do. And I was just like, oh my God, I got to meet the, this, this uh, woman. So I literally highlighted your name. Oh, and wow. I was like, okay, I'm going to call her when the time is right. So talk about what got you into this field? Why was it so important for you to start working with you? Well, for me, it was because I myself was what they considered an at-risk youth. Ah. So high school was not a good four years for me. <laughs> yeah. um, I was actually facing five years of prison my senior year what? of high school. So, but God is good. Wow, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, as a result of that, I had turned my life around, but I always wanted to make sure I was able to go back mm -hmm. and work with those young people who the world likes to cast out because yeah. that's what happened to me yeah. the yeah. world was like no she's trash you know mm -hmm. leave her alone mm -hmm. even family members were pretty much casting me yeah. out yeah. and so I wanted to be kind of that nurturer and that person for these young girls who feel that way about their lives because of the choices they've made oh my past. goodness now you look like you could still be <laughs> about 16 18 girl I wish <laughs> how do you um I guess sometimes looking like a peer you know and um maybe even sometimes feeling like a peer to them because maybe those are a lot of the, the only relationships some of them only have right. how do you kind of um i guess maneuver through that kind of authority versus um peer mentorship you know so type of i'm never their friend gotcha so from that's day good. one that's good it's authority so gotcha. I'm not trying to be your mother, more like a big sister who will get motherly with you if necessary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I never establish a friendship with them mm -hmm. because I feel like the moment you do that, that's when you lose them. Yeah. Because then they look at you as, a, as an equal. And that's the thing. Like you said, I'm yeah. young right. myself. Right. So right. They, they might want to test me or question right. that. Right. So from right. day one, I have to show my authority, but let them know I respect you because you respect me. Mm -hmm. So even though we're not equals, I respect your opinions, I respect your thoughts and yeah, your feelings, yeah. but still understand that I'm the adult in the situation. Yeah, and so um, I guess really kind of what I'm hearing is a lot of times with, with these youth, they don't have a disciplinary kind the majority of- Majority of yeah. the time, that's what it is. And so how do you kind of deal with that when it comes down to it, when you're teaching them one thing and they're they're good and get, getting some good nuggets from you, but then they gotta go home Absolutely. and it's almost undone. How do you handle that? So, like you said, it is, they're only with me maybe five hours out of the week and then mm -hmm. they have to go home and spend all of that time there. Mm -hmm. I like to give them writing assignments and a lot okay. of reflection. Okay. So when something happens at home, you write about it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then when we get back together, then we discuss, okay, so how did that situation make you feel? And what do you feel you could have done if you were involved in the situation? Yeah. Or how do you feel you would have handled uh, the situation right. had it been you? Yeah. So in this way, they're seeing the situations, but they're like, I don't want this for myself. Myself. Yeah, I can't help where good. I live, but I don't want this for me. So mm -hmm. what can I do differently? So when I become an adult, mm -hmm. I don't make these same mm -hmm. choices. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple things. I want to talk.
talk a little bit more about Social Butterfly, how it got started, how long it's been in existence, and how people can get connected to it. Uh, but uh, in addition, you know, I'm sure that there is relationships, regardless of you having the, you know, kind of strict disciplinary connection. Yeah. There's relationships that evolve, and I think what uh, something to maybe even point out is that people don't always realize that mentorship and the type of work you do is not something that you can pick up and put down. Yeah, no, it's lifelong. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's lifelong. lifelong. Oh my god! <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So even though technically I only mentor girls to, from 12 to 18. Yeah. When they turn 18, I don't drop them off. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They yeah. don't say, okay, well, bye, Miss yeah, Shauna, we're yeah. done with you. They're in college. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so I'm still continuously encouraging them. Now they're busier than they were mm -hmm. when they were in high school and then they might have gone off to college. But at least once a week, they're getting some motivational yeah. text messaging from me. I love it. I'm calling them at the beginning and at the end of every semester. Yeah. You know, because I know they're going to still need that just because they're an adult that doesn't change. I love that. And I then I that. have girls who have already graduated college at this point yeah and i'm at their graduation and for oh me that that is the accolade that's the reward that's the reward that. is seeing them walk across the stage for high school and college or whatever that next stage sure, is sure sure oh my goodness i'm so obsessed <laughs> okay so social butterfly let's talk a little bit about yes, that yes. a little bit more about that yes so where did it start um you know how how long have you uh, been doing it how many girls have you connected right. with? It started in my mama kitchen. No, oh, <laughs> well, pretty much. Listen, it, it dang near I've been me. doing talk shows since I was like seven years old with my right, little recorder. Right, not even know it. Right. That's <laughs> what you were destined to be. Like that, that calling. Yeah, honey. I'm telling you, it'd be uh, on you. <laughs> yeah, but no, it really started from me mentoring my little cousin. Ah. That's where it started um, because I saw her taking the path that I had taken. Yeah. And I'm like, uh-uh, see, no, we're not going to do that. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so working with her and seeing her transition i'm like oh okay mm -hmm. i got something to share yeah, yeah um but yeah. once i became a member at my church parkland assembly of god oh yeah uh, oh shout out to bishop harvey yes, you love bishop him harvey, so much hey. here yes. <laughs> um but the youth pastor there had reached out to me on facebook and said i need you to work with my kids and i'm like mm, i don't mm. think you want me <laughs> to work with your kids you because sure I'm, I'm so focused on my past right you know and wow. he was like no god told me you're That's supposed good. to work with our kids and so instantly when i got in there it was like i hit the ground running <sighs> building relations like kids mm -hmm. were just naturally gravitating towards mm -hmm. me i never understood why until mm -hmm. i got into mm -hmm. my purpose mm -hmm. oh my goodness that makes so like we're talking about milwaukee treasures and everything that you're doing but th that just blessed somebody right there you know a lot of times you're already walking in your purpose before you realize it and sometimes you just got to tap into that thing that that is drawn to you even if it's like i don't want to do that but what what <laughs> Let me say, what's you, following you yeah, you know the kids i said why do these kids want to be around me and then it's like because i have that authority they say oh she's strict she mean oh can we come over wow like, why you come over right i'm strict because, in me. because that was something that they were missing yeah. and they saw it in me so when they get around me they're like a totally different kid wow. and i'm like dude when i drop them off their mom like what? she don't act like that. i'm like she don't cuss in front of me See? she will dress differently like uh, everything you raise that, a standard I raise because i have a standard wow that just that's gonna bless somebody in relationships <laughs> Have a standard, have a standard, in standard life, period, period in life, and people are either gonna rise to the occasion or they're gonna walk away. Absolutely. Oh my God! Okay, so is, are there any other organizations that you uh, that you work with? Oh, or is it just, absolutely, okay, yeah. absolutely. Um, I definitely I work with Running Rebels. Hey. Shout out to Vicky and Dawn. They show love with yeah, me. That's, that's um, cool. I've definitely done some things over with Urban Underground with Charlotte oh, Moore, of course. Love Reggie Charlotte. Moore, um, and just basically even some things with the Boys and Girls Club. Some mm -hmm. of the high school sites mm -hmm. you know so i'm definitely always looking to partner with people see yeah. how we can work out together because i feel like there's there's not enough of us but there's yeah. more than enough children for us to share yeah. because somebody that you reach i might not be able oh, to reach good. and vice versa that's so, so we need to all be able to work together in certain situations absolutely um so the uh two things i'll say and then we'll we'll kind of start to wrap up um so i did you know you brought up the lord hallelujah yes, uh, Jesus. <laughs> so how do you work that in you know again when you're dealing with youth especially if they're you know not your own um how do you work in spirituality or do you keep it out or how does it come in <laughs> right well, i take that <laughs> everywhere i go okay no but seriously you though, good Jesus. right so i'm not a faith-based organization mm -hmm. which allows me to get into spaces oh, right uh -huh. but you can't take my god out of me mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. so i talk about my testimony 
I share my walk. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? This is and what, what, what right, got they, you out. Right. Yeah. So when they say, what was it that got you through it? And then I'm telling them, yeah. it was God. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was my relationship with him and growing that relationship with him, not what other people said my relationship with him should be. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was a lot of the issue with our young people. Mm -hmm. They're seeing the same yeah and they're yeah. like well what's the difference yeah, yeah <laughs> between yeah. me and you why, why do i need to go to church or mm -hmm. have a relationship and it's like but if you're being around someone who is showing the god in them yeah then you automatically are going to want to start asking me questions i love it i love it. it's more and i think that we could take that lesson you know outside of even just mentorship just in general you know as disciples of christ that just do you Absolutely. know just be and in your being and in your testimony, the other people will either want it and they'll accept it, they'll they'll inquire about it, or they won't. And so I, I love that. So it's not a force, it's not a beat over no, the head, it just kind of is what it is. It is what it is, but every single time, next thing you know, you know, like Wednesday, uh, so sometimes I'll work with them on a Wednesday, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, well, where are you about to go? I'm like, I'm about to go to church, we got Bible stuff. Uh, we got youth service, you coming? And oh, they be like, yeah. no, we're not coming. And then after a while, I start saying, oh, somebody dropped you off at my church on Wednesday, huh? <laughs> you hanging oh, wow. out? And next thing you know, they're wow. slowly starting to come in and it's like just planting no seeds. Wow, I'm just thinking about that. And I'm sure then at some point it may even extend to extend the family. Extend to the family next thing you know. Because now you're like, well, why do you always want to be up in that building every Wednesday? And now on Sundays, what are they doing yeah. there with my kids? Wow, I love it. You see how he works. Why don't he yeah, do it every time? Do it. <laughs> okay, so um, I guess kind of in wrapping up, how can people get connected to you and support what you're doing? Or if you're looking for other organizations to get connected to, let's talk about that. Yes, always looking to connect, even with the boy organizations, because we can always oh, partner okay, and do things together. Yeah. Um, but you can find me on uh, Facebook at Social Butterfly, and it's Butterfly with. B U T T E R F L I I. I didn't honey. notice that. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Double eyes. <laughs> We're also on Instagram, and you can find us on our website at www.socialbutterflywith2eyes.org. I absolutely love it, and I absolutely love you. Thank you so much for taking time. Listen, in the beginning, y'all, I was like, okay, we're, I would like to meet at your office. And she was like, listen, my office is the streets, in so many words. She would know you said the field. And so I said, well, you know what, let's do this interview right out here in the field. So we happen to be uh, at the Boys and Girls Club. Is this in Sherman Park? Yes, we are in Sherman Park, Boys and Girls Club. Mary Ryan, yeah. shout out. Shout hey. out, you know, because, you know, sometimes you need to see people, you know, we, we're always in offices, but sometimes you need to see us out here in these streets, and we are out here in these streets. In this, in this Milwaukee weather. In this Milwaukee okay. cold weather. I can't believe it, but I'm so excited to have someone like you um, just out here doing it and meaning it um, with without... Uh, these expectations in return sometimes people do it just to get the pats on the back and yeah. i know that i mean i literally called her out of nowhere you know so i'm so appreciative of all that you do and thank you for being an amazing milwaukee treasure oh, hugs you. and love and i'm honored for the opportunity oh thank goodness you so much. absolutely so guys if you have someone um that you consider a milwaukee treasure someone that you'd like us to shine light on make sure you just send me an email to saved and the city mke at gmail.com in that Saved in the City MKE at gmail.com and I will be happy to interview them as well. Is that all right? <laughs> if that's all right, then we'll definitely see you next week and you guys be encouraged. Bye!